Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people and my heart, I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no bam in Gilead? Is there no physician there? That's the question. Is there no bam in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered or restored? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health of the daughter of my people not recovered? Why? That's a question. Why? Why? Why is it that my people have remained sick? Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is there recovery? Is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? I want you to hear me very clearly. You are not saved, neither are you safe, until your health is restored. You are not saved, neither are you safe until your health is restored. In Psalm 103, from verse 1, Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and do not forget his benefits. Plural, are not benefit. He forgives your sin. That's the one benefit. He heals all of your sickness is number two. He redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and mercy. He satisfies your mouth with good things and then your youth is revitalized, restored and renewed every day. God executes righteousness and just for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses, gave them his word and they saw his acts by the word. Until you are saved because you are healed and restored to health, you are not saved. Many think forgiveness of sin is salvation. No, salvation is an all-embracing word. It has to do with forgiveness of sin. It has to do with remission of sin. It has to do with healing of every sickness and every disease. It has to do with deliverance and liberty. It has to do with redemption. It has to do with soundness. It has to do with wholeness. It has to do with your establishment in liberty. It has to do with your enjoying the glorious liberty of God's children. It has to do with your empowerment to live like God upon the earth. When we hear of salvation, it has to do with your being kept, preserved from all evils. In Psalm 12 and verse 5, God says, For the oppression of the poor and for the sighing of the needy who need healing, now will I arise and set him in safety. That means I'm going to deal with his issues. I'm going to deal with his problems or her problems and I'm going to bring them out of it and set them in safety. He says in Psalm 1 to 1, from verse 7, he says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evils. He says, The Lord shall preserve thy soul. He says, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Preservation from all evils is part of salvation. Divine protection, divine direction is part of salvation because if God cannot keep you, if he has brought you out of one problem to another, you will fall into that same problem or, or worse still, a worse one. And that may mark the end of your life. Listen, you are not saved. You are not saved until your health is restored. In Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 17, the God who cannot lie says, I will restore health unto you. Not just will I heal you, I will restore health unto you and I will heal you of your wounds. The things that 
you have been suffering, I have wounded you, I'm going to heal you of those wounds, says the Lord. In Jeremiah chapter number 33, chapter 33 and verse 6, God says, Behold, I will bring you health. I will bring you healing. I will bring you health. I will bring you restoration. I will heal them and I will reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. That means you are going to have what will perpetuate your healing and keep you free from sickness and evil. I will reveal abundance of peace and truth. Hallelujah. May this be your story. Until your health is recovered, you are not saved. What is salvation? It means the act of saving from harm. It means deliverance from evil. It means rescue. It means recovery. It means escape. It means safety. It is freedom from Satan and all of his evil works. Salvation is freedom from Satan, from sin, from sickness, from sorrow, and from all the evil works of the devil that is uttered by Satan through sin. Sin, sickness, grief, sorrow, they are part and parcel of sin that you must be saved from. Sin brought its fruits, which has to do with every problem that mankind is suffering today and sickness is one of them salvation is your freedom totally from every evil work of the devil christ was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and the last enemy that he came to destroy was there so every enemy has been destroyed just as death has been destroyed christ abolished death he has brought life and immortality to life by the gospel. 2 Timothy 1 verse 10. He has destroyed the devil that have power over death and has set free those who have lived their lives afraid of Satan. So there is nothing. He has spoiled the powers. He has spoiled principalities. There is nothing that should keep you tied down to any sickness again. Until you are saved and restored to health, you are not saved. That's why I'm shouting. I pray that God will help you. Adam was free, made like God in Eden. He lived free. Christ came here, made like God. He was free. God wants you free. God wants you restored. Free from sin, from sickness, and from every evil. And God wants you to be restored, to reflect him, to look like him. He wants his image and likeness to be reflected by you. In Colossians 1, verses 12 to 14, it says... Giving thanks unto the Father who has made us fit to partake of the inheritance of the saints in the light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, from the power of sickness, from the control of demons and diseases and evils, and has translated us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the firstborn of every creature. The express image of God. So, as he is now, so we are. By the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been delivered. You have been bought with a price. You are to glorify God first in your body and with your body. And then in your spirit and with your spirit, which are his. Sickness in your body does not glorify God. Sickness brings dishonor to the Father. A man whose daughter has epilepsy cannot be happy. In the Bible, a man whose child was tortured by the devil was not happy. He kept following Christ until his son was, sec was set free. The woman who thought was bound by the devil cried to God, cried to Christ, followed Christ everywhere until her daughter was set free. The noble man whose son was dying left his nobility and pride and came to Christ in John chapter 4 and didn't go until Christ said, go, your son lives and was so. What am I saying? Christ has paid the price for you to be healed, for your sins to be forgiven. And for to be healed. Why will you take forgiveness and uh, reject healing? Ignorance. Today, accept healing. Because until you are you are healed and restored to hurt, you are not really saved. The devil will say, cap capture you, mess you up, and destroy your life. Oh, I will go to heaven. Yes. Lazarus in Luke chapter 16, from verse 19 to verse 23. 21, he died. 20, 20, 21. He was already dead. He was sick and was a beggar. Coming to beg for arms and dogs were licking his sores. Quickly, pretty soon he died and went to heaven. He was useless here on earth. He wasn't useful to anybody. 
You are not brought to this world. God didn't bring you here for you to be useless. God brought you here to be useful. And if you are sick and poor, you are, you'll be useless. Satan will make you useless. He said, but this is a people robbed of their health and of their wealth. And so they have become priests. This is a people robbed and spoiled. They are snared in holes and hid in prison houses. They are for a priest. No one says deliver for a spoil. No one says restore. So God wants you to be rescued and delivered and restored. Even the lawful captives who are supposed to die sick and in sin because of what they have done, God wants them delivered. Shall the lawful captive be delivered? Yes. Shall the pre of the terrible be rescued? Yes. For God says, I will contend with your contenders and I will save your children. I will feed your contenders with their own flesh as bread. I will drink their bread as wine. In other words, God says, I'm going to fight. I'm not going to leave any stone unturned until you are free. May you be free today in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power in the blood of Christ Jesus, you are delivered from the power and control of Satan, sin and sickness. And you are translated into the kingdom of Christ the Lord. There is no sickness in Christ's kingdom. That is why you must be healed now of all sickness and of all disease. There is no disease. There is no devil. Satan is not part of this kingdom. As Satan cannot be in heaven. He's not in heaven. He's not part of this kingdom. But if you allow him, he can mess around your life. He said, give him no place. He won't take any. Resist him and you will flee. I declare today, because you are not saved until you are, your health is restored, I decree that you be healed and restored to health. God has said that we restore health unto you. May he fulfill this word in your life today. May you be free from sickness today. I don't care the report of doctors. If you believe my report, you'll be free right now. Jesus took your sicknesses. He himself carried your Diseases and by his stripes you will heal. I command your healing and restoration right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every telltale sign of sickness or disease you are carrying in your body, I decree their end right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I announce your healing. I announce your liberty, your deliverance, your freedom. In the name of Jesus Christ. I announce your restoration to hell. No matter the reason why you are sick, they are canceled. Jesus Christ died for you. He has paid the price. I am here to deliver the goods. And one of those goods is healing and restoration to hurt. I therefore decree your healing right now. I send it to law by authority in the name of Christ and with his precious blood. And I declare your freedom. You are free. Go back to your doctors. They will tell you that evil plague is gone. Christ healed by his spoken word. He healed by his touch. He healed by the faith of the people. Whatever. By the spoken word, I decree your healing right now. Because I know you believe you, and you want to be free, I announce your freedom right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands towards you and I release his healing anointing and power hidden in my hands. I command the fiery flames of healing anointing to reach you where you are. In Jesus' mighty name, whatever has been walking in you, the Son of God, is uprooted. I cut them down right now. The word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It can pierce through to divide the bone and marrow, spirit and soul. It can descend the thoughts and the interests of the heart. Whatever is hiding in you, cause sickness or disease, I cut them off. I cut them down. I remove them from you. And I announce your freedom right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is no sickness in the kingdom. There is no sickness in God. There is no sickness in Christ. There is no sickness in me. I decree today as your day of freedom from every sickness or disease. And or disease in Jesus mighty name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are liberated. You are free. And you are restored to health in Jesus mighty name. It is done. Not by mind, not by power. But by his Holy Spirit it is done. You are quickened, you are restored. You are revived, you are energized. Live and not die. And let your testimony be shared worldwide. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Peace.